the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment continues to impact Barbados through its many social development programs and initiatives. This television series, Bridges, is where we share those programs, activities and opportunities. I am Tamisha Doughty. This week, we are at Belle Plaine St. Andrew, where the Youth Development Program Block Committee launched Project Dawn. Project Dawn is a multifaceted initiative from the government that seeks to provide training opportunity. It seeks to provide technical assistance to all the blocks across Barbados. Um, we are launching here this evening. Uh, maybe it is significant because the church is involved in this, so the blessings is there. For St. Andrew being the place where such a project is being launched. I, I want those who would ultimately benefit from this initiative to know that this is the culmination of, of months, and in some cases years, of hard work and effort. Thank you all for bringing this opportunity to ourselves, to not only to show what we could do in St. Andrew, is a lot of benefit here alone. We can take this opportunity to do the best that we can do. We can try to produce some good food, and give people some opportunities, some opportunities to get some work and employment. My only message to you now as, as beneficiaries of this of this, this, this donation and of this land is that you, you apply those, those basics to success. One of the things I want to say is that when I speak about Project Dawn being multifaceted, we have training that is being provided at the SJPI, at the, um, the, the BBC for Marine, and vocational training board. So if persons on the blocks are interested in training, then this is an opportunity for them to enter SJPI without the requisite entry level qualifications that would normally obtain. The project is set up in a way that we provide the necessary uh, opportunity, we provide the training via paying tutors to deliver whatever it is that they want to do. Now there's no real secret to success, but there are certain basics that one must engage and apply if one intends to be successful. And those are commitment, you must stay committed, you start these things, you're gonna have setbacks, you're gonna have difficulties, but you have to be committed and stay the course. You have to be patient. Now, the only thing that we ask of guys on the blocks is that if you're interested in a particular area, and I, I expect that the youngsters here at St. Andrew will be registered farmers, is that they register a business. As long as you can register a business and show us that you have that interest in, in, in terms of your own development. You must prepare yourself to work hard. Hard work. If I were to pick up one to be the secret to success, it has to be hard work. And I'm encouraging you now, if you will play those three, there are more, but if you will play those three, patience, commitment, and hard work, this project is going to be a total success. Now, I'm a firm believer that there's all, that is not all negative on the blocks across Barbados and this initiative is clearly an example of the fact that we reached out to the block here at St. Andrew, they embrace um, agriculture as one of the means of uh, doing something that is positive and we have put the resources behind the initiative here. You can just go after it the best way and reduce the animals and we plant some plants, which is through trees and some vegetables. We hope that everything can run smooth. You know what I mean? So we thank each and everybody that involved. There's a notion that we cannot reintegrate youngsters from the blocks back into society. I don't subscribe to that. I believe that everybody sometimes needs a second chance. And government through Project Dawn is providing an opportunity for all of the blocks, not just this one at St. Andrew. But wherever there's a need and they identify with the block committee, then we will put measures in place to facilitate the needs of all of those. Um, we are not just dealing with mainstream youth and we believe that everybody possesses that opportunity to excel and we are going to do that. Do you have an idea for a business or have started a business? 
Are you between 18 and 35 years old? Then you need to contact YES, the Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme. YES is a dynamic network of services creatively packaged for you, the young entrepreneur. YES offers critical, timely business solutions, specialized technical assistance in accounting, legal, and marketing, a practical entrepreneurial training program, and your own youth enterprise officer for one-on-one -on -one counseling and mentoring. Contact YES today at 535-3835 and get your business moving. The Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme, Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment. Barbados recently made history and became the first small island state to host an international anti-doping convention. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, Charlie Brown, reaffirmed Barbados' commitment to fair and true sport during his address to the meeting. Let's take a look. The Roundtable with stakeholders in the Caribbean to address the current challenges and issues faced by the region regarding the protection of sports values, ethics and integrity along with identifying expectations and good practices to provide potential guidance for enhanced implementation of the Anti-Doping Convention on the ground is further recognition that Barbados and the region are serious about what matters in sports. Barbados has always recognized the principles of fair play, the promotion of health and well-being, and education in sports, and has been at the forefront in the region in the promotion and elimination of doping in sports. Barbados was the first English-speaking country to form a national anti-doping organization in March 2000. It also trained a large number of doping control officers and promoted anti-doping education within schools and the national sports federations. In addition, Barbados is the host country for the Caribbean Regional Anti-Doping Office and was among the first countries to sign the International Convention Against Doping in Sports in January. 2007. Our Barbadian athletes and support personnel must feel confident and assured that, that when they are on the start line, they are competing fairly against other competitors and that victory is gained through hard work and determination. It is a value that we as a country will always promote. It is also imperative that we continually strengthen our anti-doping programs to stay ahead of evolving doping practices. This includes enhancing testing methods developing new detection technologies and promoting intelligent-led investigations. I urge member countries to allocate adequate resources and support research initiatives that contribute to the advancement of our collective efforts. By working closely with supporting bodies, we can create a stronger and more effective global anti-doping framework. The Roundtable with stakeholders in the Caribbean to address the current challenges and issues faced by the region regarding the protection of sports values, ethics and integrity along with identifying expectations and good practices to provide potential guidance for enhanced implementation of the Anti-Doping Convention on the ground is further recognition that Barbados and the region are serious about what matters in sports. Over the last week, we got the opportunity to meet with Mrs. Sophia Paris, the Acting Chief Community Development Officer and some of her team over at the Community Development Department at their Warren's Office Complex headquarters. Among several projects, the department continues work on rolling out its center management committees, community impact programs, and the distribution of certificates for completed courses. Let's take a look at what has been happening over there. So far, we've made a good start. We, we are into our pilot phase. We have Drax Hall and Greens in St. George. We also have Rices in St. Philip and St. Elizabeth Resort Center in St. Joseph. And as I say, we're in the pilot phase, so currently they're um, undergoing training. So the, the members of those committees are currently being trained. We would have started our training on May 28th and that first training was held at St. Elizabeth Resort Center in St. Joseph. Um, thus far, we have um, had our training at all four of the centers that are on the pilot. We started with covering areas such as um, computer awareness. We've covered areas um, in leadership. You know, we've covered a number of areas that can be used you know, to help develop the community areas. Uh, we even have people who are not on the committee, you know, people from the community itself, 
who would have been involved in other groups coming to the training because it is also beneficial to them. Our staff usually leaves at 5.30 and then after, even though activities are occurring at the centers, some centers might be closed because the staff is not there or there is no activity going on. But the whole idea is to keep the centers open at least 11 o'clock. There will be a presence there and then activities in the community can be encouraged more. It's a very good initiative not only because it allows for longer use of the community centers but it also gives the community members themselves a greater say in the management of the community center because we would appreciate that um, the community members themselves um, you know as we often like to say they're the ones in the communities and they're the ones who you know would know best right what you know the best programs for the particular community so they too will have a say in the programming at the centers. It's not only just to ensure that the centers are open, but also to have a say in what is going on at the community centers. So I'm really enthusiastic about it um, because the Community Development Department, we are partnering with our community members to have them more involved in terms of actually managing the um, community centers. Development Department is proud to have trained thousands of Barbadians over the years in various disciplines. Congratulations and thank you for participating. To persons who have completed a course but have not yet collected their certificate, please contact us at 535-1669 or 535-3191 Monday to Thursday between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You can also visit us online at comdev.gov.bb and click Request Certificate to send us your details. The Community Development Department, we are committed to serving you and our communities. Over at the Briar Hall Resource Center, we got some insight about the community impact programs happening at that location from community aid, Monique Haynes. I am Monique Haynes, community development aid at the Briar Hall Resource Center. I would say um, Briar Hall is known for having a wide range of courses throughout the years. Our catchment area is really Silver Hill, Vauxhall, Sergeant Village, but persons tend to gravitate to Briar Hall Resource Center from all 11 parishes of Barbados. The demographic is wide. We have persons as young as 16 to as old as 75 wanting to join our courses here at the Bar Hall Resource Center. Um, currently they have three programs at Bar Hall. There was one going on for a long time, fairly long time, very impactful. It's called the Silver Threads and they usually deal with the elderly in that community. Very vibrant group. These ladies, we have like 18 ladies and, you know, they bring life to Briar Hall. They honestly bring life to Briar Hall on Thursdays. They meet every Thursday from 10 to 2. Briar Hall, we have programs for seniors. And these seniors are very active. And this is one of the things that we would like to encourage too. Uh, and encourage the seniors to utilize the facilities during the day, they do craft, they do exercise, they do devotions, and some of them go on tours. And these are all programs um, which are designed um, by the community development department in collaboration with the seniors themselves, because they have a say in what they do and what they would like to do and what they would like to see happen. Um, for the younger people, um, again, there are some programs which uh, will be there to uh, appeal to the younger people. And there's one that is very interesting called Safe Haven Closet. It's basically assisting persons, young people who are looking to be employed. It's a system with their personal development, preparing them for the world of work. And also that closet, they have clothes, they have clothes that they can wear toward, to their on their interviews if they have to be interviewed. The mandate of our program is basically to assist young adults as it relates to the world of work. 
and then for the not so young or not so old <laughs> um, you have the programs in the evening well like we do the skills programs for them you know so it covers the total community when we're looking at the programming there's another one called recently therapeutically you and that is a, a massage course that has begun recently. There are two components to that class, um, the actual massage therapy and the world of work. That class will run for 13 weeks and the students are actually in session right now. My name is Rashida Beckles and I am one of the tutors or facilitators for the program. So this particular program that I'm facilitating at this point is really about the world of work and preparing for the world of work. As you can appreciate, there's so many persons competing for jobs, whether unemployed, underemployed, persons that want to shift in terms of a particular area, sector, or to really follow their passions and their dreams. This is our first time actually doing the massage therapy course. And it was actually conceptualized because um, we had the course care of the elderly and it actually falls into the whole theme so that is the reason why we would have decided to do massage therapy and add the world of work to it there's a different vibrance there's a different vigor there's a different energy that comes from when you do these programs with the community development department it helps to build self-esteem it helps there's so many other i would say ripple effects and positive impacts from doing the programs through the Community Development Department and for our residents and for fellow Barbadians and citizens of Barbados, they're free of cost. So just feel free to visit us at Bar Hall Resource Center to register for any of our programs. Um, we have friendly staff here and you are welcome to come and visit us anytime between 9.30 and 5.30 p.m. The Community Development Department, we have 39 functioning community centers and resource centers throughout the island of Barbados. We are pleased to offer you the facilities in your communities. Certainly, we have made them more inviting. When you traverse, you know, throughout all of the island, you can see we have refurbished them. We have started ensuring that when you come to those centers that we've created a safe space where you can have your activities. We've done that with the installation of security systems. We've even started instituting new seating arrangements. So when persons come and they want to use our internet facilities, you have that space there. The CARICOM Youth Ambassadors Ashley Lashley and Shaquem Howell recently paid a courtesy call to Barbados' Ambassador to CARICOM, His Excellency David Komishong, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. At the meeting, Ambassador Komishong encouraged the Youth Ambassadors to educate young Barbadians about CARICOM and what the organization means for the region. Youth Ambassador Shaquem Howell had an exciting time at the Bay Primary School where I Am CARICOM, Kofi's Journey by Don Paris was launched. Howell led the Class 3 and Class 4 students in a fun interactive session where he asked them questions about CARICOM. Let me look at our Caribbean region. I would say CARICOM is one of our greatest achievements. I'm sure you know that CARICOM started back in 1973, 4th of July, where you had four prime ministers coming together. CARICOM is about unity because all of these, all of these islands, countries are separate countries, but CARICOM brings them together in a unity. These four leaders coming together and deciding we're going to carry on the journey and form Caribbean community and commonwealth. And that's what we are celebrating next month, 50 years since we signed the treaty. The treaty is an agreement among countries. And the law is there, Ambassador Commission, so he will guide me. If it's between two persons, it's a contract. If it's among member states, it's called a treaty. Right. Thank you very much. And they decided that it was necessary to come together. 
and it celebrates over 50 years this year. Each member state with 20 in that dimension, 15 full member state plus the five associates, are having their individual activities as well. And today I am pleased to see that the launch of the book, Kofi's Journey, I am Carrico, is being held here at the Big Grand School. Unity. And unity is very, very important because if you come together in, in a union, you become much stronger than if it is just you alone. So, for example, um, you see your teachers here, teachers in this school, you know they belong to a union, right? They belong to something called the Barbados Union of Teachers. I see Miss Paris. Miss Paris belongs to a union too. She belongs to a union of principals of public secondary schools. And you know what happens when you're in a union? You see if somebody tries to unfair one of these teachers, one of your teachers, that person got real trouble. Because they they would not only have to deal with the, the teacher alone, but they have to deal with all of, all of the teachers in the union. They have to deal with the whole union. So unity, when you come together, when you're not just an individual, when you come together in a group, that gives you a lot more strength than if you were an individual. Where you have it, and that is a wild pool. For your resources, for your opportunities, for your careers. So think carefully as you look at your future. You don't have to limit yourself to our areas, but you have millions of people to sell your goods and services. I am based here at the CSME unit of the CARICOM Secretariat, who's part of the Directorate of CARICOM Single Market and Trade. And I have been here for many, many years. And this year, the CARICOM Youth Ambassador Program will be launching its 30th anniversary celebrations. Now, when CARICOM was celebrating its 20th anniversary, the leaders at the school thought that it was very important to encourage the voices of young people to be able to make positive changes to grow our community community. And this year, we are now celebrating not just the 50th anniversary of CARICOM, but the 30th anniversary of the CARICOM Youth Ambassador Court. And as the Ambassador said, my name is Shippen Howell. I currently serve on the Regional Executive as the Vice Dean of Information and Communications of the CARICOM Youth Ambassador Court. Okay, my name is Dawn Paris. I'm the author of Kofi's Journey and CARICOM. Um, the book, I guess the book actually came about in conversation with a friend of mine. Um, I became aware that because of the positive anniversary of CARICOM, the member states were each um, planning to do something big um, for the anniversary. And I thought it was the perfect opportunity um, to, to do that. And obviously, having worked in, across CARICOM, I have been a journalist for over 20 years, worked in Barbados, of course, Antigua and worked with the Caribbean Media Corporation, which you know is a regional media organization. So CARICOM is something that is kind of dear to my heart. I submitted a proposal to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they considered it, and then they gave me the go-ahead to break the book. So I'm hoping that perhaps we could have a part two of Kofi's Journey Part Two, where Kofi goes to the other countries that he did not get to visit in this particular book. But also, I think there's a lot of room for educating children who are even a little bit older. I believe there is the opportunity for that to happen. The 2023 Parish Talent Search is on. The talent shows, which are part of the annual program of the Community Independent Celebration Secretariat, will host three shows in the northern, central, and southern zones across Barbados. Persons are encouraged to step forward and participate in dance, drama, song, poetry, instrumental, and unique non-traditional forms of entertainment. Reach out to your Parish Independence Committee and share your talents. You can also call the Community Independent Celebration Secretariat at 535-3835 and sign up. 
You have talent and we want to see it. Community Independent Celebration Secretariat invites you to showcase your talent at this year's Parish Talent Competition in dance, drama, singing, poetry, mime, instrumental and unique non-traditional forms of entertainment. For further details, please call 535-3835 or visit the office in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment. Sky Mall, Haggett Hall, St. Michael. We also wish to remind you that applications to the Barbados Youth Advance Corps are still open and you can register online or collect application forms from our ministry headquarters at Sky Mall, Haggett Hall, St. Michael, or you can visit the Barbados Youth Advance Corps at number 33, Warren's Industrial Park, St. Michael. Uh, early in the morning, do some drills, or it's PT while I'm yawning. Sun ain't gonna kill, but it's all for the bad of me. Trying to change my destiny. CYAC, molding the youth of tomorrow. CYAC, teaching us to lead, not to fall. We just do drills. Learning life skills, marching on till confidence fails. The Barbados Youth Advance Corps. Building the youth for a brighter tomorrow. Call 535-0180 or 535-3835 for more information. That's it for this week. It has been a pleasure. And as always, we encourage you to stay connected and keep up to date. On Instagram, the Community Development Department at Comdef Barbados. The Division of Youth Affairs at Div Youth 246 the Sports Development Unit at sportsdevelopment.bb, the National Sports Council at NSC Barbados, Community Independent Celebration Secretariat at Community Independence 246, and the Barbados Youth Advance Corps at Barbados Youth Advance. You can also stay connected on Facebook by visiting Community Development Department, Division of Youth Affairs, National Sports Council, and the Community Independent Celebration Secretariat. Or feel free to call us at 535-3835. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next week.